IKEA, a brand known for its meatballs, flatback furniture, maze-like stores and its bright yellow logo. The company was founded in 1943 by the late Ingvar Kamprad and has gone on to become the world's largest furniture business with 446 stores in 52 countries. The company differentiates itself by furnishing the entire home, while many other competitors only provide products for certain areas of the home, such as Home Depot, who focus on the DIY enthusiasts. Let's take a look at how Ingvar Kamprad built IKEA. Kamprad was born in 1926 in Småland, Sweden, on a small rural farm. He started his first business at the age of five, selling matches by buying them in bulk and selling individually for a small profit. At the age of seven, he sold bicycles to his neighbours and expanded into Christmas trees, seeds and pens and pencils. At the age of only 17, he founded IKEA in 1943 from his uncle's kitchen table with money his father had given him for doing well in school. The company started at a mail order business and began to sell furniture produced by local manufacturers. Kamprad ensured that local furniture makers signed contracts so they could only supply IKEA with their products. He initially used milk floats to deliver products to customers in the local area. Kamprad explored furniture design, developing IKEA's now famous self-assembly model. He also used catalogues and a large showroom to attract customers. The first store was opened in Smallland in 1958 under the name Mobile IKEA, meaning IKEA furniture in Swedish. The IKEA name are Kamprad's initials plus Elmtarid, the farm he was born on, and Agunarid, the village where he was raised. From the start, IKEA stores have been warehouses where customers can collect furniture and are often located outside major cities where there is a lot of parking. Due to this simple business model, IKEA does not need a large number of staff in its stores as customers do most of the work in collecting the products they want from the warehouse. In the 1950s, many Swedish furniture retailers felt threatened by IKEA's low-priced products, pressuring consumers to boycott the brand. They tried to stop Kamprad exhibiting at or even visiting furniture fairs. In response to this problem, Kamprad bought production and design in-house, as well as striking deals with retailers overseas to build the business. The IKEA concept was born out of the boycott, providing consumers with simple furniture which was designed, distributed and sold all in-house. Kamprad believed that everybody should be able to afford stylish and modern furniture, a vision he was able to bring to life. In 1953, IKEA's iconic flat pack furniture was introduced after high costs and damage occurred when furniture was transported across the country. Flat pack furniture is generally cheaper than pre built, and psychologists have found that people often select flat pack furniture over pre built products as it gives the customer a sense of satisfaction once the product has been built. In the 1970s, more stores were opened in Europe, with expansion into Asia also occurring. Kamprad realised from the start that to grow IKEA, expansion outside of Sweden would be required. A key factor in success has been the patience of growing these number of stores. While retailers such as Home Depot have rushed overseas expansion only to fail, it has always been part of IKEA's long-term strategy. They often postpone the opening of stores in new markets to ensure that they get it right from the start, unlike many other retailers who adopt an open now fix it later approach, which is often unsuccessful. Since 1958, every IKEA store has also been built with a cafe. Prior to this, only coffee and cold dishes were offered, but management soon realised that customers often left the store at lunchtime to eat, breaking up the buying process. By giving customers the opportunity to eat in store, they often spent more money. Kamprad has ensured that Swedish staples such as meatballs, cream sauce, and lingonberry jam are often served. In 1965, IKEA opened its flagship store just outside Stockholm in Sweden. The design was inspired by the Guggenheim Museum in New York and was easy to reach by car from the city. However, in 1970, a technical fault caused a fire at the store, which destroyed it. It was later rebuilt in 1971 with the addition of self-service. 
allowing customers to pick up products quickly and drive away with them in a matter of minutes. In the 1980s, IKEA expanded further into Europe and the United States, opening stores in the UK, France, Italy and Philadelphia. Europe is now IKEA's major market, where 70% of the company's stores can be found. In 1990, the company focused on home furnishing solutions to meet the demands and needs of families with children. And in the 2000s, they expanded into Japan, Russia and India. Everything from the bedroom to the kitchen is available to buy from the company. IKEA stores are well laid out and the maze-like construction encourages consumers to spend more as they walk past a number of different items which they may not have seen otherwise. Arrows on the floor direct customers through the shop of showrooms and into the warehouse where flat pack furniture is stored. The confusing nature of IKEA showrooms makes shoppers less likely to leave items behind as they would only have to backtrack, causing more impulse purchases. The cafe is cleverly positioned between the warehouse and the showroom, preparing customers to continue their shopping spree. As customers head towards the tills, heavily discounted items block the way as IKEA's last ditch effort to encourage further impulse buyers continues. In 2013, Camprad resigned from the board of IKEA and his son Mateus became chairman of the company. Despite his resignation, he still played an active role, visiting IKEA stores around the world. To start IKEA, Camprad never borrowed money and kept the company private until his death in 2018. Despite having an estimated net worth of $58 billion according to Forbes, he still referred to IKEA employees as co-workers, stayed in cheap hotels, drove a 20-year-old Volvo and flew economy class whenever he travelled. He liked to keep his life private and rarely gave interviews to the press. Much of the product that IKEA produces and sells is country neutral, so they benefit from economies of scale which allows them to keep prices low and undercut competition. Despite being founded in Sweden, many of the products have different names, like the famous Billy bookcase, which is the same name that is used across the world for the product. Camprad preferred naming products as he found it difficult to remember the product codes due to his dyslexia. The naming of products also makes it simpler for consumers to remember rather than using hard to pronounce Swedish names. Ingvar Camprad died in 2018, but there is still growth for IKEA as around 70% of the company's stores are found in Europe. Only a quarter of the world's nations have access to an IKEA store and the growing populations in emerging markets point towards an obvious place for store openings. His three sons remain in the business, driving the company to new heights and opening more stores around the world. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please drop us a like and please consider subscribing for plenty more videos to come.